Coach, the first thing I want to ask you, Andrea Bargnani, and what is his situation right now? Well, right now it's day-to-day, -day, Matt. It's, it's one of those things that uh, he aggravated this, the same injury he had. Um, I, I told him, you know, it was, a, uh, it was pro partly my fault because we're in the heat of battle. Probably played him too many minutes consecu on consecutive nights. But he told me, he said, Coach, if you had to try to take me out, I would probably, you know, said no. So uh, it was one of those situations where it just came down wrong. It just aggravated it. Uh, the, the MRIs were negative. So there's nothing new. There's no new strain or, or tear or anything like that. So that was a, a positive. So it's how much he can, uh, how much pain he can endure when he comes back. Well, one of the positives actually is the fact that Andrea would tell you, Coach, if you wanted to take right. me out, I would not have come out. That is actually a sign of growth with him. No question. He was actually hurt that uh, he couldn't finish the game in, in, in a double overtime game. He felt like he let me down, the teammates, his teammates down, most of all his teammates. And uh, I said, hey, look, guys, you, your health is, is far more important than uh, that game, you know, because he's, he's going to be a big part of our franchise. Again, I've told everybody I talked to George this morning, he's playing at a big-time all-star level, not only on the offensive end, but the nuances and the little things he's doing for us on the defensive end, talking, being a leader on the defensive end is uh, something that, that I didn't expect. All right, so now what do you do without him? What do you do? You know, you know from a defensive standpoint, you can make adjustments, you can make changes, mix in the zone, do different things. But from an offensive standpoint, how do you account for what you're going to lose? Well, we're going to have to do it by committee and in different ways. First of all, Linus Clays is going to start in his spot. And we're going to try to do a lot of things similar to when Andre is in that position, uh, at the forward position, running them off screens, putting them at different spots on the floor, kind of mixing up the defense and get some outside shooting from that. The other situation will be from Eddie Davis uh, in the post, getting some points in the post, him posting up and trying to get something from that. So it's going to be points by committee. Uh, it's going to be tough. I mean, offensively, because a lot of our spacing, a lot of our offensive rhythm is based on Andrea's presence on the floor. And, uh, but uh, again, we have, you know, those guys have to step up. It's going to be a big night for them against one of the top um, defensive steel, um, steals defensively. Uh, team in the NBA so it's a challenge but uh, that's what you know it's the great thing about the NBA is there's always a challenge each night there you know everybody around the league has injuries on their team and uh, we've got to have our bench to step up and take Andrea's place all right so you go back this past week you know 14 years hadn't knocked off the Phoenix Suns that happened second night of a back-to-back -back. Utah it doesn't matter if Stockton and Malone are out there or whether it's Devin Harris and Paul Millsap yeah. when you get Utah on the second night of a back-to-back -back yeah. and you're resilient throughout the course of that game and you come away with a victory mind you it hadn't happened in 12 years right, there right. Uh, what does that say now about your team and what you're trying to get across to them. One thing, Matt, we're growing. That's the most important thing that I see. I saw so much growth with our zone defense, the guys communicating, talking, correcting themselves in our zone defense. I see the growth there. I see the growth internally as far as their, as far as their fortitude is concerned, the toughness. Uh, Utah has probably, over the years has been one of the toughest places to play. And I just saw our guys fight through altitude, fight through some officiating, fight through a lot of different things to get that win, and I, I was proud of that. And tonight, you know, the NBA presents another challenge. The same thing here in, in Denver, altitude, a team that really is a, a, almost like a track meet as far as a, a, a running team is concerned. One of the top teams that's producing points in the paint. So it has a lot of other challenges, different type of challenges, but again, it would be a big test for us, even more so without Andrea. Real quick, George Carl brought you into the NBA. He's the head coach here in Denver. Uh, what has he meant to you in your career? Oh, so much. I mean, a lot of the NBA philosophy, a lot of the NBA approach that I have comes from George. He's one of the best, Matt, as far as handling a team, coaching players, know, knowing what to get out of, to extract out of a player and how to push a player, what buttons to push, what positions to push, put guys in offensively innovative defensively with his traps. Thank goodness the zone defense wasn't in when he was when I was with him in Seattle because he would have had some kind of kooky zone. <laughs> but he is great. Uh, you know, he's beat the can you know, so far beat the cancer bug.
fighting that each day and every day. So um, it was great to see him this morning. And again, I, I cut my teeth with George in the early 90s in Seattle. All right. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to join us. Uh, you've done a magnificent job. And I know as we always talk each and every day, you know, new challenges and you lead this team and you're the right person at the right time for this franchise. So thank you. Thank you, Matt. All right.